Hi, this is uh, my first uh, battle report. It's Warriors of Chaos versus my friends Toon King. Uh, it's a 2,400 point army and I'll go through it uh, as we do. I realise I do need to take more photographs but uh, I'll go through from the deployment and what we've got and then move into the battle itself. My army comprises of a Sorcerer Lord on a Manticore, uh, level 4 on Death Magic. I've got an Exalted BSB on the Demonic Mount, a normal 1-up, uh, 3-up. There's uh, a Sorcerer, level 1 on Death, 20 Warriors of Nurgle, with a banner of 1 plus leadership. I uh, then have uh, 2 units of uh, 5 Warhounds, a normal Chariot, a Gorbis Chariot, and a Chimera. My opponent's army comprises of a Tomb King with a Potion of Healing, the Sword of Anti-Heroes and uh, Potion, oh, Potion of Healing said that, uh, 2 plus Ward on uh, Flame and Tanks. He's got a Light High Priest, level 3 on Light, a level 1 on the Heck, and another level 1 on Light. He's got a Necrotect, a Hyra Titan, 39 Skeletons, 6 Chariots, 3 Carrions, 2 War Sphinx, a Casket, and uh, 3 Necro Knights which were entombed below the sands, ready to come up at some time during the game. From what I can remember my friend had the three uh, light magic which was uh, Shem's Burning Gaze, Fire's Protection and Briona's Time Warp. He also had the uh, Spirit Leech and Shem's on his Hyra Titan and he had another Shem's and he had uh, a 5 plus ward that he could give. I wasn't quite sure what uh, magic that came from. From Tomb King deployment from left to right was his Carrion, his War Sphinx, the two level 1 mages, uh, his uh, skeleton block with the light, high light priest and the tomb king, he then had the war sphinx, his casket and six of the uh, chariots. The warriors deployment from left to right was a unit of warhounds with a gorby's chariot to their right, uh, then the warrior unit, then with the skull crushers to their right and then another chariot Another unit of Warhounds, the Dragon Ogres, the Chimera, and the Sorcerer Lord on the Manticore. The BSB was behind the Skull Crushers. My initial thoughts on deployment was to have the Gorbis Chariot and the Skull Crushers take out the War Sphinxes if they could, the Lord on the Manticore, and the Chimera to come round to the right to take out the Casket of Souls. Turn 1 went to the Warriors of Chaos, which was really good news for me, and I advanced the, the right flank forward, just giving him a opportunity for a long-range charge into the Dragon Ogres. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't move the Manticore up far enough to get in a good magic phase. On the left, I moved the Warhounds, the Chariot and the Warriors forward, just enough to uh, keep in line with the Skull Crushers. Uh, unfortunately, I forgot to move my BSB, and he sort of uh, was left out of place for this bit of the turn. The magic uh, phase was a bit of a, a washout, and uh, not being in range, couldn't get anything off. Um, death magic's a bit short. Tinking turn one. I think, uh, fearing that I was going to overwhelm him on the right hand flank, uh, he decided to charge his uh, chariots into the dragon ogres. A um, bit of a long charge, and I thought that was going to be uh, pretty. Uh, Bye bye for the Dragon Ogres with the uh, the number of strength 5 hits coming back from those chariots uh, going first because I had great weapons on the Dragon Ogres. But unfortunately, or fortunately for me, he failed his uh, charge and he just rolled 4 inches forward, giving me uh, a good opportunity to charge the next turn. On the left flank, uh, both of the War Sphinxes moved up to uh, try and threaten my lines. His magic phase didn't get very much off, but got enough to give a buff to the chariots to give them minus one to hit. Warriors turn two saw three charges. The Dragon Ogres declare a charge into the chariots, followed with the Chimera to charge them, and the Gore Beast to charge the War Sphinx. Two charges get home, the Gore Beast chariot and the Dragon Ogres, but the Chimera fails its charge on 3d6, it moves forward two inches. For the rest of the Warriors move, the left hand side uh, just move slightly to give uh, a better opportunity to charge the skeletons if I got a chance. Uh, moving the warhounds up to uh, get in a position to chaff up anything that comes in the way. Magic uh, got in a position to purple sun down the flank of the chariots, but he dispelled it. So uh, lucky save for him there. The buff on the chariots uh, give me uh, an 
of difficulty to hit him uh, meant that the Dragon Ogres did very little damage. The Dragon Ogres won the uh, combat by one, um, and we just stood there, knowing that I'm going to get a War Sphinx into the flank of the uh, Ogres next turn. On the left flank, the Chariot did its job and put the War Sphinx down to three remaining wounds. So a good result for the uh, Gore Beast. It wins the combat, but uh, the Construct rules meant that it, the uh, War Shrine didn't lose another off of its uh, tally. And as predicted, the uh, War Sphinx comes into the side of the uh, Dragon Ogres. Going to be a bit of a smashering there. Uh, and on the left side, the Hyra Titan charges into the combat with the War Sphinx and the Gorbis Chariot, lending support. King Normal moves. The Carrion come in and chaff up the Warriors, preventing them from uh, attacking the uh, Skeleton Horde block. Um, and we go on to magic. Uh, Tomb King buffs up the skeletons with a 5 plus ward or regen. Uh, they also get the uh, minus one to hit them in combat. So giving them a fair little bit of protection from anything that might hit into them. As predicted, the War Sphinx and the Chariots uh, demolish the Dragon Ogres. The Chariots overrun, but the War Sphinx decides to stand to uh, keep an eye on the Lord on the Manticore. Two good things happen though. The War Sphinx had to use its breath weapon to uh, get rid of the Dragon Ogres, and the Chariots ended up in a position where they were going to be in a good charge distance of my Chariots and of my Chimera. So I was looking forward to Declaration Charges in my next turn uh, going along really well. Mixed fortunes on the left flank, the Gore Beast Chariot did manage to finish off the War, Sh War Sphinx, but uh, the Hyro Titan put uh, two more wounds onto the Chariot. Um, due to that, Chariot breaks, bounces over the Carrion, bounces over the Warriors, but fortunately no panic is failed and no dangerous terrain test is uh, needed. It uh, passes it, so pretty safe from that respect. But next on to the uh, Warriors' turn. So, Warriors turn three, and there's a number of charges on the right flank. The uh, Sorcerer Lord on the Manticore goes into the casket on the hill. The Chariot and the Chimera go into the front of the Chariots. Uh, the result of that is the Chariots are totally decimated and wiped out. I then go on to try and overrun with the Chimera and the Chariots. The, uh, the Chariot doesn't get out of the way but the Chimera gets behind the War Sphinx and cannot be a target in this turn. Casket of Souls, that's uh, killed uh, very quickly by the Sorcerer Lord. On the left flank, the only movement I did was to move the Warhounds up to chaff up his skeleton block so that they had to go forward to the Hounds and to get in the way of his War Sphinx, meaning that they'd have to go into the side of the, uh, the Hounds. Um, why I did that was I could see that a charge was coming from the War Sphinx into the side of my Warriors. That would have been 2d6 plus its movement. By putting the Hounds there, his overrun was then going to be limited to 2d6 and he had a good chance to fail. Uh, there was an 8 inch gap between the Warriors and the War Sphinx after the, uh, the Hounds uh, and there was a good chance that he might not get that. So Hounds in the way, uh, a good move to stop him. Just a quick shot showing the demise of the chariots and the casket and uh, the positions of the uh, the winning units. Yep, and uh, in goes the War Sphinx into the side of the Hounds. Uh, he rolls for his uh, Entombed Under the Sands and the uh, Necronites will be coming up uh, very shortly. Uh, magic goes off, 5 plus regen onto the uh, Skeletons and also minus 1 to hit again. Um, yep, can't stop that magic. As you can see, the Carrion have uh, moved in a position uh, to block my Skull Crushers. The dice is the marker for where the uh, Necronites are due to come up. And yep, there they do. They don't scatter, and that's where they start, behind the uh, units. Warriors turn four, and as you can see, yep, the War Sphinx fails its overrun by an inch. Uh, and that really was the death knell to my opponent. Uh, my Warriors and the BSB charge into the Skeletons. The Skull Crushers charge into the Carrion, the Chimera goes behind the Skeleton Horde, and the Manticore with the Lord 
comes up onto its flank getting ready for a purple sun. And yet, able to get the purple sun off, it travels 12 inches through and destroys the skeleton unit, sending them to oblivion. Uh, and that was a game. However, we uh, ignored that result and decided to carry on playing as if it hadn't happened, uh, just to see what would happen in the skeleton warrior combat. Uh, and that's what I'm going to go through in the, the next few slides. Yeah, I think my friend was really gutted because uh, I rolled a 20 to cast the Purple Sun uh, and he only managed to roll 19. So he missed stopping it just by one point. Um, real shame for him. Uh, but as I say, it uh, certainly worked for me for tactics. It wasn't a very good combat result for the uh, the Warriors. Um, due to uh, ranks and uh, casualties, what it means was that... Uh, my warriors were taking a leadership test on uh, minus five, and yep, I managed to roll a three, and they stuck. Sadly, the BSB goes, and then I make a mistake. What I forgot was, when the BSB flees, he actually dies. So we did move him right to the back, uh, and then uh, did rally him later, but uh, he didn't play any part, so he didn't really affect the game. So we move on to uh, Tomb Kings, turn four. And he charges in the Hyra Titan into the flank of the warriors. Uh, once again, he gets off in his magic phase. Uh, the good buffs, minus ones to hit. Uh, the 5 plus regen. Uh, and proceeds to uh, take down my warriors. Fortunately, again, I roll a 3 and they stay. Uh, really lucky once again. Which then allowed me to charge the Chimera into the rear. The Manticore with the Saurus Salord into the flank and also my other chariot into the flank of the skeletons. Uh, that really proved the death knell of the, what with the uh, impact hits, the uh, thunder stomps, the attacks by the uh, sorcerer lord, uh, it destroyed the skeleton horde uh, totally. So, uh, a really good win to the Warriors of Chaos, uh, and uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll give a brief summary of my thoughts on how the game went and uh, the problems that my friend uh, faced. So a big win to the Warriors of Chaos, and uh, some of the things that I thought didn't help uh, my uh, my opponent. He's only just started back up using the Tomb King, uh, and has not quite got to grips with some of the rules. Certainly with regards to the Casket of Souls, uh, that it doesn't need line of sight to, uh, to affect anything. So he could have put it much safer behind his units and protected it, which would have given me a lot more trouble. Uh, also I thought uh, he left uh, the Casket out on the, uh, the right flank, uh, with just the chariots a little bit open. I think perhaps uh, tinkering with the list, maybe a skull catapult just to do a little bit of range shooting, uh, possibly to get rid of big things. Uh, but overall I think uh, it was that failed charge with the War Sphinx that caused him the grief uh, and that allowed me to get the Purple Sun. Uh, never leave home without a dispel scroll. You never know when you might need it. And that would have certainly helped him in that occasion. However, um, that was it. A good game. Thank you very much for listening to the uh, battle report. Um, please like if you do, share if you want. I uh, hope to get more reports out and leave any comments. I uh, hope to get some more battles coming up. Um, speak to you soon. Thanks very much. Bye.